Welcome pilots to a supplemental tutorial video. I'm Fernando Z, developer of Hunter Knight Starfighter. In this video I'm going to cover G-forces. G-forces are a very important part of the Hunter Knight flight model and combat model and it's something that you're quickly going to learn plays a very critical important role in the game. So learning how G-forces work and how to counter them and how to get the most out of your pilot without blacking out is a very important thing that all pilots should learn in Hunter Knight Starfighter. The default loadout that comes with the, that you'll get includes inertia dampener. You can see there is my third, second hard point, GAT DMP. Uh, the inertia dampener is basic. Think of it as a modern pilot flight G suit, but the sci-fi equivalent of that. You still experience G forces, but it means that you can you you can resist them for longer, and that means that it gives you a little bit more time to react and counter them. But you can still you know you can still black out or red out. So. I recommend leaving it on when you're starting, but at some point you should unequip that DMP and also get used to flying without it since it, you won't always, you know, you're not likely to always fly with it. Even after you do master G-forces, uh, DMP is not just a beginner's tool, it's very useful in the hands of a very experienced and talented pilot because it allows you to pull more Gs than the other guy, which means you can either force them to black out or force them to ease up on their acceleration while you're still able to push your ship harder because your pilot has more resistance to G-forces thanks to that DMP. So we have the boost equipment that increases your ship's acceleration. Think of the DMP as in increasing acceleration simply by the fact that your pilot can handle more of it. So a very useful piece of equipment even for players that aren't, um, that don't need it as a, a sort of a learning aid. Okay. The other thing to understand about Hunter Net and G-Forces in general is that sometimes people get confused because the G and G-Forces comes from gravity and they say, well, there's no gravity in space. Although right now I'm flying inside of a gas giant, so I guess there technically would be some uh, <laughs> some gravity. Uh, but but regardless, there is no gravity in space, true. Uh, but the G, for, G from G-Force is just a way, this is a unit of measure. So one G is one Earth's gravity. And gravity um, is also uh, those g-forces in space are actually a result of your acceleration. So if you, I'm going to switch to flight assist off since this makes it more obvious. If I switch to flight assist off, okay, and I let go of my thrusters, then I will be drifting. Now I'm moving at 356 meters per second, but my ship is not accelerating because my velocity is constant, so that means I'm not, I'm under zero g-forces. But the minute I start accelerating, like let's say I accelerate downwards, now I'm experiencing g-forces, and since I was going downwards, negative g's, I start reading out. Okay, so it's acceleration that causes the g-forces that we experience in the game, and that includes both translational accelerations, forward, back, left, and right, and also rotational accelerations, like you know yawing left or yawing right. The rotational g-forces are not nearly as high because they're limited by you know your rotation speed and where your cockpit is relative to this, the rotation point of your ship, so they're not quite as high, but they do also play an impact. So, the other thing you need to understand is that your ship's performance, acceleration performance, varies by axis, right? It doesn't accelerate equally well in every direction. Your most powerful one is forward, but your pilot's resistance to g-forces also varies. Uh, human beings are actually quite good at resisting g's if you're just accelerating forward, like if you were in a, in a rocket launch, for example, right? Which is nice because that lines up perfectly with our most powerful thrusters, our main thrusters. What we really don't handle very well is flying backwards, you know, sometimes called the ice out G's, or downwards, right, negative G's, where the blood rushes up to your head. So you want to avoid uh, prolonged acceleration in those directions. The other thing you can do to help deal with your G-forces, besides avoiding the more difficult location, uh, directions that, that put a higher strain on your pilot, is to counter the G's. So if you're, you're, you're pulling uh, reverse G's, you'll notice that I want to switch to forward acceleration and counter those G's more quickly. Same thing if I were selling to the left and starting to black out, I can accelerate to the right to, to mitigate that. Uh, the other way is to distribute the G-forces um, across the various axes. So if I start circling this arm of the space station here, the Harvester space station, and now I'm putting vertical G's because I'm rotating it vertically. If I start blacking out in the vertical direction, I can roll and then continue my turn 
in the lateral direction, and then roll and continue it in the vertical direction, and then roll and continue it in the lateral direction. By doing that, you can distribute the GG load um, across the different axes, and your pilot can resist and hold out for longer. Um, and flying with flight assist off is actually pretty nice because you, the minute you stop thrusting, you're going to quickly go to zero Gs. Doesn't mean you can't fly with flight assist on. Uh, you can, it just means that you have to keep in mind that when you're using flight assist, for example, your ship is putting in inputs and using the thrusters even when you're not, you're not because it's trying to maintain your current vector. So a, a classic example of this is somebody power burns, you reach really high speeds, then zeros are thrust, your ship immediately tries to bring you to a stop and you start pulling a lot of uh, eyes out Gs because it's using your reverse thrusters to come to a stop. But a smart pilot, knowing how G-forces works, can do this. I'll do power burn to go forward at very high speeds and now when I zero out my, my strafe, I will turn. So now my flight assist is actually using my main thrusters to bring me to a stop, accelerating my pilot in the forward direction which is positive G's, which is the less of an impact. So, to summarize, you want to keep in mind that your ship accelerates differently in different directions and that your pilot is affected by G-forces differently in different directions. You want to counter those G's by strafing in the opposite direction, uh, distribute those G's by using your roll to, and, uh, to maintain your flight path while accelerating in different directions. And you also, when you're flying with flight assist, keep in mind that your ship is firing the various thrusters, uh, so it's not just what your joystick is doing, it's also what the flight assist is doing to keep you from drifting all over the place, so keep that in mind. But yeah, the you know a good way to practice um, at first is to practice managing your G-forces while flying around um, you know space stations or asteroids, then build up to maybe uh, flying around the AI during a break, then going into combat, and trying to get in as close to the enemy as possible while pulling a lot of G's, while flanking them, while attacking them. So you want to sort of kick up the difficulty one step at a time, and before long it's going to become natural to you, and you're going to be fl fl flying that edge between consciousness and unconsciousness without blacking out completely, or without losing uh, consciousness totally. So I'm going to go ahead and start combat here, and show you, before I end this video, show you a demonstration against the AI, okay? Use the contacts array. I'm using the, the there's a keys to let you cycle through the contacts in the contacts array. Z as in Zapata, X as in Xavier. We'll cycle through it by default, right? So I'm gonna target uh, this heavy fighter. And I have him here targeted on the radar in front of me. And I'm gonna try to hug him real close. And I'm gonna try to flank him while I'm doing this. I do have the, the inertia dampener, so I'm not going to pull a lot of these. I'm actually pretty good at countering them. So I might switch. Let me switch to inertia dampeners off after this fight. So I'll show you so you guys can see the difference. I lost sight of him, so I'm looking at the radar. I have missiles on me. I'm pulling some G's there. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get real close to him. Using my higher rotation rate and the light fighter to try to avoid his front guns. Get those weaker uh, side shields. The closer you are to them, the harder it is for them to get those guns on you. There we go. So now I'm going to come to complete stop. I have stop to refit it turned on. Go to refit, DMP, and I'm going to replace that with uh, heavy cannon. I like this combo. And put my first high point to Vulcan. So now I have Vulcan heavy cannon. Um, I'm going to get in real close and use this to my advantage. And now I have to manage the G's without the benefit of inertia dampeners. So, let's go for this um, this bomber. Lost target lock due to... Oh, I have an enemy on my 6, so I'm going to go target him. A little heavy, but he came back. It's, I think it's the same heavy from before in the video. Yeah, the other one was had swarm missiles equipped too. But now I'm going to stay I'm going to stay really close to him, but avoid black out. I mean, it's okay if you're losing vision a little bit like this. That's fine. That means that you're you're pushing your ship hard. As long as you can still see what's going on, you don't need us. It's okay, right? That means the other guy's having a hard time keeping you in their six. I'm not the world's greatest talker and fighter at the same time. <laughs> so 
Yeah. Notice that when I hit him, the, the little hit indicator sound will change. If I hit, if hit his no. Oh my god. I took a lot of damage there. And there's two enemies attacking me, so I better finish this guy off. There we go. Um, yeah, there's four enemies on radar, four, four triangles there. If you shoot somebody in their sides, you'll get a higher ping 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 ping. The, the hit indicator sound changes depending on whether you're hitting somebody's forward or rear shields or their weaker side shields. Very useful to know. Okay, but yeah. Blanking people, pulling as many Ds as you can without completely uh, blacking out, plays an important role in the combat. I'm going to black out on purpose now, just to show you what blacking out looks like. There, blacked out. Doesn't mean I'm completely lost consciousness, so I can get out of it. A lot of times I'll even get my last kill, because you know, you, you, your, your brain has memory, right? You can, you can do shots blind, because you know where they were heading, which way they were flying. But if you do this for too long, I'm going to try to do this. Um, get a little distance between me and the enemy, but if you do this for too long, you black out. There's actually a pilot in World War II that would stay, that would actually get lots of his kills while fully blacked out. And he had trained himself to be really good at flying while blacked out and using that to get more performance out of his ship. But if you keep doing this for a while, you are going to. Let me get him, see if I can get him. That's more easily this way, right? Um, you're going to lose um, consciousness. This will last five seconds, and during that time, your ship is a sitting duck. Now, if you're drifting, you know, you'll keep drifting, and the enemy might not realize you blacked out, but it's very dangerous. So you definitely avoid getting to the point where you get G-Lock. And that's it for this video. I hope that uh, helps you new pilots get used to G-Forces. Um, it's going to feel a little bit different also depending on the fighter. The life fighter is the most maneuverable, so it's easiest to black out in, but you can black out. Uh, and go into G-Lock in any of the three fighters. But that's another thing you can do, maybe fly the heavy fighter uh, if you're finding the light fighter a little too too much horsepower to handle, so to speak. But yeah, I've, it's common that new pilots struggle with this, but 99% of the time, uh, I always get a message a week later, oh my god, I love the G-Forces, right? So get used to it. Um, it's a challenge, but you know, that's what games are about, you know, it's about challenge yourself and overcoming that challenge At least that's what games like Hunter and are about I should say Okay guys, that's it for this video. Uh, good hunting pilots and see you in the next one